I don't really know if you can hear from the sounds outside, but I live in New York. If I were to take the Q train to the N, I would end up in Manhattan, in a very particular neighborhood called Hell's Kitchen. Maybe you've heard of it. The criminals in Hell's Kitchen have been nervous. They've been whispering about someone or something that's been prowling on the roofs. This thing has been bad for business. Very bad. Breaking in and breaking bones, kind of bad. They say that this thing can hunt you by scent, that it can hear you through a soundproof wall, or listen to your heart beating from across a busy intersection. It hunts at night, they say. But you and I know that the devil hunts in the daytime as well. Monday through Friday, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can walk into the law offices of Nelson and Murdoch and you can meet him, the daredevil. And from behind his dark glasses, he will tell you that if you're enjoying this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Not my words. Daredevil got his fighting abilities from his father, who was a boxer, somebody who knew how to take a beating and how to give one. But his enhanced abilities were born from contact with radioactive material. Let's take a closer look at these parts, the ears, the nose, the brain, to draw more attention to them. We'll start by generating a few thumbnail sketches. Thumbnails are quick, messy little attempts to settle on a pose, one that shows off the physical abilities, the costume, the personality of our heroes. They're also great for just warming up your hands, your wrists, your arms, and get your brain on the right track. So, as we begin, let's focus on Matt Murdock's fundamental characteristics. His personality can be described as relentless and without fear, so I'll make him look hard and determined. His body type is, well, I mean, he's pretty cut. We're doing a portrait, mostly, but I'll give him a long, strong neck. Daredevil is tall and graceful, but unlike someone like Nightcrawler, Grace is not his primary descriptor. His father was a boxer. Boxers gotta box up. Boxes, rectangles, cubes, squares, shapes like these convey a sense of sturdiness and toughness and dependability. So I'll square off his jaw and his eye sockets and his cheekbones. I'm giving him a rather flat, chunky nose, thick brows and a broad jaw. As I do this cutaway of his face, I'll make space for little detailed excerpts, little boxes with close-ups of his nasal cavity, brain tissue, and inner ear. Unlike many of the heroes and villains that we'll cover, these aspects of his anatomy will not appear markedly different from those of a normal human. So we'll pretty much just be drawing straight from reference. Remember, use reference. All right, enough research. I've got a long way to go on this project and I cannot let my perfectionism get the best of me. Let's move on to the inking. I can tell as I begin this project, that is to say the entire Marvel Anatomy book, that a huge challenge for me going forward will be the balancing of detail. I love adding detail and I'm not good at letting go of a piece of art until it's totally ready. And I'm only beginning to grasp the fact that these very qualities might very well be the end of me. I have several anatomy books at my disposal, and what I've begun to realize as I begin this project is, oh my goodness, human anatomy is complex. It has so many things going on. Things going in and out and under and through. Muscles and bones are only the beginning. But organs? Veins? Connective tissue? Freaking glands? Uh, are you kidding me? It's too much, man, it's too much. And yet I am making an anatomy book and anatomy needs detail. But I'm on a deadline. <laughs> what am I going to do? First things first, I'm going to have to remove a lot of detail. Everything must be simplified without looking like it's going to be simplified. Detailed enough to hold your attention, to provide a single meal's worth of detail and no more. You know what? Let's make that the word of the day. Detail. How much is too much? How much is too little? The answer depends on the project itself, on your audience, on the style that you're going for, etc. But I do know one thing about balancing detail, and that is this. For art to be successful, its fundamental build, composition, or structure must be simple. The definition of a detail is an individual feature, fact, or item. But when we take in a piece of art, we don't see the individual features or facts we see it all at once. We take in the whole thing first before moving on to individual details. In this way, it is the simple, easy to read aspects of a design that are the most important. 
And if these most basic elements of the design are not up to snuff, then no amount of detail will save your piece. And yet, if these foundational aspects of the design are well expressed, then the details can elevate your work to the next level. Your audience will come for the simplicity of your design, but they will stay for the details. In the meantime, if you're enjoying this video, I would ask that you do me the favor of liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and maybe, just maybe, leaving a comment. Remember that this series will be a collaboration between you and I, and it will be shaped according to your feedback. Step one in the coloring process will be to block everything out. This blocking out process is done for a very specific reason. I'm creating a stencil, one big stencil of the entire form so that I can slop a digital paint all over and around Matt Murdock and it will all stay within the boundaries of Matt Murdock. That was a weird sentence. Once everything's blocked out, the coloring process will be simple, straightforward. Daredevil has one primary color, red with a capital R. If the colors in this piece were dancers, red would lead and everything else would follow. So I'll start off by layering in a bright red, then dragging it into a darker and more desaturated place. I'll make this layer partially transparent because I really want to see that paper texture underneath. Uh, by the way, this paper texture is a placeholder. I don't know what the pages of this book will actually look like, so this current version is just to give me an idea. Once that's all complete, I'll move on to blocking out the other regions with color, then add light and shadow and detail. There's that word again. I want this book to be packed full of detail, but I also want it to draw its power from its simplicity. Let me tell you a story. When I worked at Bethesda Softworks, I learned a number of valuable lessons about how to balance detail with simplicity. I am a perfectionist, and yet I worked in a production environment where I was made to be part of a team, one that must move very quickly and constantly towards its destination. There's no time to dawdle with the details. We have a game to make. Todd Howard was the executive producer of Bethesda Softworks, and he was my boss for seven years. Together, we worked on Oblivion, The Shivering Isles, Fallout 3, Skyrim, Fallout 4, and all those DLCs that attached to them. I was the monster maker, a 3D modeler and a texture artist. Creating a monster from start to finish would take me anywhere from three weeks to three months, long enough for me to become very attached to. I would lavish my creations with detail, adding dents, scratches, cracks, wrinkles, pores, etc. Finally, when I was done, I would show my work to Todd. It looks great, he would say. Now cut the texture in half. Now, in writing, less is oftentimes more. You can almost always make a sentence better by shortening it. But making a painting smaller in resolution, that's a terrible thing to do. I fought him every time. And I lost every time. He was the boss, after all. And with tears streaming down my face, I'd cut the texture size in half, which I should point out actually means I reduced the image down to a quarter of its original size, and I would load it back into the game, and I would take a look, and, and I couldn't tell the difference. I, the original creator of the artwork, who had spent days and days loading in all those details and cracks and pores, I couldn't even tell the difference. When we spend a long time on a piece of art, be it drawing or painting or writing or music, we get very close to it. But chances are your audience will never get half so close. We all tend to take in art from a sort of middle distance, and we judge that art from that middle distance first before making the decision to zoom in. And in the case of video game monsters like dragons or trolls or undead, the players spend less time admiring the small scars and wrinkles on the middle toe and more time trying to kill it with fire. Anyhow. You get the point. Back to the work. I've amped up the colors and created a variation between them, like giving the red of his muscles a more purple shadow and doing something similar with the brains. I want to keep the color scheme basic, as close to about three colors as I can manage, but I still want things to be interesting and rich. So, nuance. Lastly, as we round the bend on this piece, I'll play with the edges of my stencil, softening and erasing in parts to enhance the feeling of these things being drawn on paper. And I'll add a rim light, a sharp whitish light somewhat behind Matt Murdock, 
That should help things pop and add one last level of detail. And I think that's it, more or less. We're done. This is where we started. Here's what the line work looked like. And here is the final piece. That's all the time we have. I gotta run, I gotta catch the Q train to the end to Hell's Kitchen. I gotta meet a lawyer for, you know what? Never mind. I don't wanna bore you with the details. Doesn't matter. If you've enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Leave a comment too. Tell me how I'm doing. Tell me what you'd like to see next.